that was in. Got it. Okay, so here we are. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit, and we give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning, Rich. Good morning. How are you all? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good so to see we, you. Uh, yeah. We, we preached last night on, on the women taking care of the Lord Jesus and being amazed that the tomb was empty. And so we're now on Sunday morning, and the disciples are all abuzz because the tomb is empty. Uh, the women heard from the angel, and we're on what we, what in my childhood, we called Easter Sunday, what I'm forced to call today Resurrection Sunday um, in this passage. Wow. So Sunday is going on. Good morning. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, of course, it's uh, it's really the uh, shouldn't say really. It is additionally known as the uh, feast of first fruits. This is the, right. this is right. the uh, third of the high sabbaths, the, what are called shabbatones of the week. Yeah, come as a package to make pass make the the completion of Passover. It always occurs on the Sunday following this the weekly sabbath that's right passover week so a total of four sabbaths here three of them high sabbaths which are called chabatones this particular one is of of uh, great importance in that it is the one that jesus is fulfilling he is risen on the feast of first fruits which is what first fruits is all about the first product of uh, the crop um, that is uh, celebrated uh, before the Lord, giving him the first fruits of the crop uh, as a, um, a worshipful gesture to, to the Lord. And Amen. here is Jesus fulfilling that. Amen. So, so we're now down, we're now down into the, into the morning of Easter Sunday. Um, just trying to get your time clocks working here. So right. the disciples are all confused. He's risen, but we haven't seen him yet, except one of the Mary saw him at the tomb. Uh, the angels, the women saw, but the guys haven't seen yet. There's all kinds of um, uncertainty in their lives at this point. Um, and so the Luke takes us into verse 13. Can you read it from where you are, Rich? Uh, beginning, yeah, beginning of 13. Uh, that same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus. Now, these aren't the, among the immediate uh, 11, uh, but they are a close, uh, close followers of the Lord. They're probably of the 70. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so they're walking to the uh, village of Emmaus. It's about a seven-mile journey from Jerusalem. It's kind of north and west of the city. Okay, as so they're walking, yeah. As you put a timeline on this, probably two, not, not three hours away by walk, but two something away by by normal walk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they've the it's the resurrections happen. They don't know all about it, but but they're but they're going back to their home. The sense is um, about seven miles away. And they're walking and talking um, and bewildered and overwhelmed and amazed, um, as we find out. Right. So, so the other yeah. part of this I want to make sure that we understand is the Lord Jesus was a real person. He had real followers. They had real angst. They had real joy. They, had, they were real humans. Um, we, what, we, what we've said many times is that the Gospels are documentaries that's right is, these are recordings of real events real people so of course jesus in this case when we're talking about a real person we're talking about a real resurrected person there you go <laughs> so, okay. 14 please yes as they walked along they were talking about everything that had happened <laughs> what an amazing discuss these things yeah they were the fact that they you know this was such a public event, the crucifixion and the 
and the crowd screaming. There's a lot to talk about even sure. before we get to Sunday. Go ahead. Yeah, they have. And um, as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. Isn't that cool? They're just walking along and Jesus shows up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love how, how uh, casual that sentence mm -hmm. is. They're yeah. walking along and Jesus is there. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it's not... He didn't make an extraordinary appearance of this. He didn't come in with flashes of lightning and the ground shaking. He just shows up. Right. I, I love again the, in his resurrected body. So in his resurrected yeah. body, absolutely. But his resurrected body can be a walking body. I mean, they don't recognize this as a resurrected body. They just see this as some guy walking with them. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's the thing. I think, it, it, as it says here, uh, as they talk, discussing things, Jesus suddenly showed up, but God kept them from recognizing him. Amen. And this is the um, amplified version. Okay. Um, God kept them from recognizing him. I'm saying to myself, well, I mean, he's in his resurrected body. His beard has been pulled off. <laughs> um, you know, uh, would you expect to see Jesus <laughs> uh, seeing the seeing Roman crucifixion? You think, boy, that guy is dead and gone. Yeah, there you uh, go. But nonetheless, um, uh, he, he, there he is. Yes. And he asked them, "What are you discussing so intently as you walk along?" No, sure. like, like he didn't know. <laughs> so often, Jesus asked a question that he knows the answer to. I mean, almost always. But what does this, why does he ask this question this way? Yeah. Um, well, they stopped short. Uh, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about the, all the things that have happened there these last few days. Okay. Kind of like a uh, ticker, you know, ticker tape parade for the astronauts return and and you don't know what's going on or you didn't know that happened uh, only this event is even greater than that so well, the, anyway the queen is being buried and people all over the world are watching the service and you don't right. know what's going on yeah right so uh, it's nice also that luke chooses to name cleopas by name um mm -hmm. again real people real angst about Jesus and, and who he, and that he's missing and all of these things. Right. You got to be the only guy in the whole town that doesn't know what's happening. <laughs> Which is so funny because Jesus is the only guy in the whole town, the whole universe that knows what's really happening. Right. <laughs> there you go. Happened there the last few days. And Jesus asks, what things... And people, uh, some people take uh, take this uh, humorously as a sort of a flippant comment, you know, of all people to say. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it is kind of uh, it is when you consider all that happened to him, it's it's, it's stunning. But there you go. Yep. Uh, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. And they crucified him. Okay. With hope that he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. Uh, this all happened three days ago. Amen. So how, how do these two guys view Jesus? Are we frozen? No. We had hoped he was a teacher, he was a prophet, he, he was mighty, he did miracles, and we were hoping that he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. Right. There's that pervading attitude, of, even now, about him being the conquering Messiah. That's right. Which he, uh, which he uh, really demonstrated so clearly on uh the um, triumphal entry, riding a, a donkey and uh, very humbly uh, presenting himself. Um, they were, of course, enthralled with him, knowing who he was, the things that he had done all these years. But nonetheless, 
he came forth as a meek and humble servant. That's right. And as such, how's this guy going to help us beat the Romans? There you you go. And there that, you. that attitude, I, I'm sure that that attitude uh, contributed to the mob before Pilate who shouted for his death. That's right. That's right. And you think also by asking the question, Jesus, who knows everything, gets them to say what they're thinking, how they how they view the Messiah, who is Jesus. It's a, right. the um, the whole study of rhetorical and non-rhetorical questioning um, seems to be a lost art. We just mm. we just plunge into what we want to say without really listening real well to what they need to hear. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome with us. Hello. 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 Okay. I don't and so and now the two guys continue on with the conversation. Mm -hmm. Some of the women in our group uh, of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with this amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women said. Okay. So what does this tell us? What what are these men? What does what does this obviously say? Well, it, it wasn't well received by the group because first of all, it was coming from women, and women have that that uh, lower stature as far as uh, testimonies go. Yep. So um, they, they weren't really weren't believing. But Peter and John ran to the tomb and uh, discovered the body missing, just as he said. And uh, in, a, in another gospel, uh, John. Uh, saw the the wrappings, uh, and based on what he saw in those wrappings, or didn't see in those wrappings, as the case may be, um, believed believed right. that he rose. Uh, I'm I'm kind of of the opinion that uh, that the uh, the wrappings um, were of course saturated with blood and and uh, bodily fluids and so forth, and made kind of a cocoon. Yep that um, over the period of three days, well, portion of three days, uh, it kind of uh, solidified a bit. Yeah. And I mean, if that's what he saw there, this uh, essentially was a, a, a cocoon yeah. um, of wrappings and yet not cut open, yeah. body gone. I mean, how did that happen? You know, this thing had been tightly wrapped and stuck to him because of the uh, dried fluids. How did you get? How does a body come out of that without without disturbing them? Now, you know. Of course. Uh, and then you get the, that's a speculation, and uh, great, take it for what it's worth. It's it's a great speculation. Um, and the second, thing the, is, the bottom line is John saw. Oops, hang on. Uh, the bottom line is John saw these clothes and believed. I that's right. I can't remember which gospel that's from, but that's. Uh, probably John, but anyway. And, yeah. and, then, and then folded neatly is the face napkin, which right. just cracks me up. Yeah. <laughs> like, why fold it neatly? Just, you know, throw it aside. You don't need it anymore. But no, he folded it neatly. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this was very deliberate, careful act. Yes. Um, uh, uh, it, uh, it, was, it was a grave robber. Would a grave robber have been so meticulous, you know? But then why, why would a grave robber take a body out of the wrappings? Who knows? I mean, there are a lot of crazy folks out there, but, uh, yeah. you know, why speculate? And you always think that there, that Roman guard that was out front probably is coming back. And you think that could be bad. Right. All right. 25 then. 25. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it. I like, I like to believe that it was one of those, um, the words read harshly, but he wasn't being exceptionally curt with them or anything it was just foolish people you yeah. uh, you find it so hard to believe all of the prophets wrote and uh in the scriptures wasn't it clearly predicted that the messiah would have to suffer all these things before he entered his glory then jesus yeah. took them through the writings of moses and all the prophets explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself wow so if we figure that this is a two-hour 
lecture of taking him through the whole, like, it takes us a lifetime to know all of the things that Jesus taught them in a few hours here. Uh, right. And he took them through from Moses to the prophets and explaining all the scriptures that concerned himself. <laughs> What that's, a what a glorious what a glorious journey this has got this is. Really. And I can imagine that it wasn't a two hour lecture, that it was a two hour discussion. Yeah. Um, Jesus telling them about this prophecy from Moses and them responding to it. And then Jesus telling them about this prophecy from Isaiah and them responding to it. Um yeah. this was and when you think about it, uh, uh, set, uh, the Old Testament is what, 39, 39 books? Sounds right. Written by 27 different writers over a period of, of many centuries, yeah. um, at, least 11, uh, at least 11 centuries. Uh, and um, he expounded, Jesus expounded in these writings, all of the places that he has spoken of from centuries ago that these things were predicted about him so far back in history that um it, it's it's astounding it's just it's just amazing it is and uh, 28 yep. by this time they were re they were nearing emmaus and the end of their journey Jesus acted as if he were going on with them, or gone, or going on beyond them. See you later, guys. I'll catch you later. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can just imagine how that, how did, how did they know that Jesus was going to go on? Well, he, uh, at, least at this point, they still even haven't recognized him, which is kind of amazing. This is a seven mile walk, you know, at 15 minutes a mile. That's almost two hours walking with the guy. Right. And then all this time, they still haven't identified him. Uh, on purpose, though. No, they, uh, they, yeah, they so, were literally uh, blinded until this point. So, God yeah. Kept, the, the scripture said God told, God kept them from recognizing him. So you would think in the natural that they would normally recognize him, but they were kept from it because it kept the conversation at a different level. Right. And they, so, okay, 29. 29, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. Okay. They went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it, and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. <laughs> and at that moment, he disappeared. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, what an amazing two verses. Nope. It's, and, uh, it's supper time we're not we're not late at dark yet uh, my, we're we're in late afternoon and um that's my guess because I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute so they've had this whole day of talking about the resurrection of being puzzled of having the lord jesus teach them about it and it's they get back to their home and it's supper time and Jesus sits down and breaks the loaf of bread, blesses it, gives it to them, which is an interesting, it's, it's common for the host to serve the guest rather mm -hmm. than for the guest to serve the host. Mm -hmm. But Jesus reaches across, takes the bread, breaks it open, blesses it, and their eyes are open. Right. And again, this is happening on the Feast of First Fruits. Absolutely, a, so a celebration of the grain harvest. There you go, and this is uh, this is how he did it with these folks. Okay, and at that moment he disappears. <laughs> yeah. like, okay, so when they, yeah, when they received the bread, he disappeared, and they their eyes were opened, and he disappeared. He didn't leave them wondering. He um, when they when he saw that they got it, he disappeared. Yes. 32. 32. Uh, they said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. 
Uh, there they found the 11 dis disciples and the others who had gathered with him, uh, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Okay. Now that's interesting. When did that happen? Peter went to the tube with John. Yep. And they didn't talk to Jesus then. They just returned to the uh, the 11. Yep. So at what point did... Uh, at what we point all kinds of details actually about, appear to, to Peter? We have all kinds of details about what happened on Easter Sunday, but there's a lot of things happening that we don't know about. Hmm. So uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow there. So okay. the Lord Jesus appears to these two disciples, tells them everything that he can in, in a couple hours, Tracing back all the way from Moses, what a glorious, what a lifetime worth of learning in this in this brief segment. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that when we follow you, it is unbelievable. <laughs> Transform us, O oh Lord. Let us make a difference in a desperate and dying world. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord for the documentary that you provided us through the scriptures, real events, real people, um, all uh, laid out and not only written in the Bible, uh, they're secular historians uh, uh, that uh, confirm uh, these very stories. Yeah. And we um, were so thankful for the, uh, the, the record you've left us because these are, events are just so amazing. Yes. It really does take uh, study and reinforcement for us to get it. So sorry for my slowness of heart. <laughs> I yeah. truly appreciate your patience with me. And uh, I hope that uh, you will continue to lead us all um, in a way that glorifies you most. I pray this in Yeshua's name.